beginning of the end of Catholicism in Ireland, but yeah. it's it's starting to be questioned now. If you go back a generation, yeah, you probably yeah. find that the amount of people questioning it was very small. Oh well, most of my friends, very few of them would be in any way uh, a devout Catholic or anyway go to mass or even think about it. The only they ones go through emotions, not even oh. they wouldn't even go through the motions. The only ones who would would be from the country where it's very much a, you know a social thing. I had a, a total aside here, I had a friend in, in college uh, from Donegal and he was asking us a year or two ago what we were doing for Good Friday. And we were like, oh, we're, we're going out in a piss. And the look of horror on his face. He was genuinely going home from college to go back to Donegal to go to Mass with his family on Good Friday. Um, so, uh, so you put, essentially, most people I interact with uh, on a day-to-day -day basis of my own age would be either atheist or or not, you know, agnostic essentially. Yeah. Well, I would I would say that if you had to look at the demographics of the animal movement, I would think that there would be a large percentage of uh, atheists and agnostics uh, in it. Although, are you an atheist? Or yes. Atheist? Yeah. And um, at least I think I am. I'm not. I'm not. I'm, you know that joke about. Ag <laughs> it's um. Yeah. There is actually a debate within some parts of the, of the animal movement at the moment about um, yeah, kind of what you might call uh, spiritual based uh, ideas in terms of the, informing their veganism because some people assume that vegans would be uh, atheists on the ground that it's, an, it's a, the idea of looking rationally an issue, yeah. an issue and like you say in your Facebook kind of you know dispensing with the supernatural yeah. you know and dispensing with those kind of I issues and so really from from a vegan point of view, an atheist audience should be wide open for our ideas because in some senses, if you look at it you know, from the point of view of animal rights, or point of view of the environment, or point of view of health, then we've got all the arguments that should make you a vegan. Okay. Well, um, this is not a point of mine, I think it was either Michael or Derek uh, who I was talking to earlier in the week about this, and um, they were making the point that's just slipped my mind. <laughs> I think it was you. I had a point there. And it's, it's, a, it's a bit of a... Um, <laughs> oh, yes. Um, essentially, it was that um, religious people have the, this belief that um, animals were given to people to eat, which gives them a very, you know, mm. a very possessive sense about them. Yeah, well, God said I could. So. Yeah. yeah. You know, essentially, there's the, the God said I could rationalization for a Catholic or, or someone else to do it. I'm not saying that many do it or even think like that, but there's certainly the, the lack of questioning of that because animals are for food and Jesus said so. Well, uh, actually, uh, often that comes out in, in joke form. Yeah. And um, quite often, one of the, the, the you know, if, if somebody sees a, a, a vegan story or even a vegetarian story in the press, you'll often get comments like, well, you know, if, if we, we weren't meant to eat animals, then why did God make them out of meat? <laughs> which, you know, which every meter thinks is a hilarious yeah. joke, uh, ignoring the fact that we are also animals and we're also made out of meat as well. Um, but you know that tends to be a, you know kind of tapping into yeah. a religious view on some level, or a religious argument on some level. What what I found over the years that usually the rationalisations of um, either you know Christians or meat eaters tend to be rather shallow, and so when you start to scratch it, you usually find there's nothing much there. And quite often you get the, well, God said I could, yeah. argument, which, which you don't have. So no, well, that, that's, uh, that's the point I was making there. Was, uh, <laughs> no, we, we don't have that argument. Yeah. So which argument are you going to bring, bring forward? <laughs> <laughs> I'm here for that conversation. What's, what's your alternative? <laughs> well, personally, I don't see an ethical issue. Ah, okay. That, that's, you know, to be perfectly blunt, I, uh, I don't feel in any way guilty about eating meat. We did, I don't know if you saw the poll we did on the Facebook page. Yes, yes. Um, yeah, it's interesting that. Yeah, I was no quite surprised. There was, there was quite a few who said that they were they felt guilty, right? Yeah. Um, but the majority said that they didn't feel guilty. No. And so that, you know, from my point of view, yeah. as a kind of researcher and, and a uh, sociologist, quite interesting because um, it's a complicated issue about why they wouldn't. Yeah. And so if you don't, I'd like you to explain why you don't and how you construct the non-guilt eating of somebody else situation. Well, I don't feel that they are somebody else. Yeah. They're something else. Okay. There. Um, from, a, from a psychological point of view, I'm, I'm a psychology student for people who, who, who uh, didn't know that, which is probably most of you. 
Um, <coughs> people generally feel a connection to people that are closest to them. You're much more likely to be defensive of your brother than you are of your neighbour. And likewise, you're much more likely to be defensive of people who are in your own country, rather than a different country, of your own race. You know, white people tend to be associate more with white people and things, and obviously there's biases in there. But people tend to feel closer to things that are more and more similar to them. And as with animals, I don't feel any real connection. Do you, do you, do you think, do you self-identify as an animal? I do, yeah. Okay. Do you self-identify as a mammal? Yes. And an ape? Uh, yes, to a lesser degree. Okay. But, so? But I, I don't consider myself um, up to the point that I'm going to sit in a tree and throw shit. <laughs> uh, no, no, I, I wasn't going to ask that. <laughs> uh, I need to reserve that for later in the evening. But, um, no, I mean, in, but, you know, in terms of your saying, well, you know, you, you feel a disconnect. Yes. And now you've just, you've just explained that you don't. So well, you, I, I do. I, I feel that while I am a member of that, I... I'm so it's kind of concentric circles with you. So it's kind yes. of yourself, your family, well, yeah. your community, your nation. Yeah. Yeah. See, I mean, from my point of view, I, I think that if people took, I mean, like in sociology now, the big deal is is globalization. If people took seriously the idea that we are living in a global village, then that would be much better for the human being living on the planet. If we actually thought that everybody else was fellow villages, as it were. Yeah. Because that would mean then that you wouldn't have 30,000 children dying of starvation related oh, issues you know, every single day, yeah. uh, including on 9-11, which is the kind of controversial point to, to make about that. But, but the point is, every single day we allow that. Yes. Okay. So when people say, well, let me ask you a question then and see if I can develop the point. Do you think human beings are more important than, than other animals? Yes. Okay. So let's imagine two... Population explosions. You've got however many billion humans now. We're in between six and seven. Okay, but we've also got billions of non-human animals which we breed. It's yeah. not as though we capture them, right? No. Okay. Now, of those two populations, if the human beings were deficient in terms of food security, you would prioritize those, right? You yes. would, you would give the food to the. Yeah, but that's not what we do. What we do is we give feed. To the animals rather than food to the people. That's not strictly relevant because the animals tend to be bred in countries where there isn't that I'd imagine. Certainly the beef industry in America isn't really giving food to cows that would be given to children in Africa. No, but, that, but that's the point. I mean the, 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 point, the point is in terms of the, the kind of gross amount of, of foods that are produced, we could feed everyone. We could feed every, every Gross everything. food is yeah. kind of a but, different but, issue. It's the same as well, the typical Irish mammy of eat your dinner, there's a starving child in Africa. I don't, I don't, I'm not quite sure if that particular anecdote well, fits with what I'm saying. But um, what, what, I'm, what I'm really saying is that e even if you've got a situation where you've got areas set aside for feed, yeah. now often, and it's also relevant with cash crops as well, but often what you've got is the best land going to service the needs of other animals, through which you get your hamburgers. So if we were to radically alter that situation and take seriously the idea of human rights and the fact that humans really are allegedly more important, yeah. like everybody claims, then the first thing we would do is feed everybody. And we don't. We prefer to feed ourselves with hamburgers, which take a lot of feed, rather than giving food to the starving. My counter to that is I don't, you know, you're obviously much more knowledgeable, knowledgeable on the issue than me, but I don't think there is that equivalency of food. And, you know, a bushel of wheat in America is not the same as a bushel of wheat in Africa. You can't transport it as easily. There's international barriers to that, but there's also just time barriers, the cost of moving well, things like that. We, 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 can, we can transport soldiers all over the world. I'm sure we can yeah. transport, you know, food all over the world. Uh, you know, but, so... I'm, I'm not convinced about that. It's, it's a question of political will, and it's also a question of, of moral will, in a sense. So, in 